Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are set to embark on another exciting lesson of our online course on on-chip power integrity. Before we dive into the contents of this lesson, let's quickly recap what we have covered so far. In the previous lessons, we have discussed SOCs, their role in the technological advancements, Moore's law, basic terminologies in SOC development, and the SOC design cycle. In lesson 2, we introduced power and signal integrity and explored in depth the fundamentals of power distribution. In this lesson, we will guide you through the analysis and optimization of power distribution from an electronic system perspective. Prior to delving into the core topic of this course, that is optimizing the PDN at the die level. Power Distribution Network Basics Power integrity of an electronic system involves delivering a stable and reliable supply voltage to all its components. To achieve this, careful design and testing of the power distribution network is necessary. The PDN constitutes the network of components that form the power delivery path from voltage regulators to SOCs that need power. The key components of an electronic system's PDN are Printed Circuit Board PDN It consists of the voltage regulator module, that is the voltage source Bulk and MLCC capacitors PCB power and ground plane routing Package PDN Package power and ground plane routing and MLCC capacitors SOCs are on die PDN It consists of the power grid, MIM and die caps and the current sinks Components of a Power Distribution Network Have you ever wondered about the role of printed circuit board or motherboard that we often see? They not only provide mechanical support or host all SOCs, but also power up these SOCs, providing electrical connectivity for data communication between them and thermal cooling solutions for the heat released while the SOCs perform their compute intense workloads. This slide shows the printed circuit board with all its components annotated. We have specifically underlined a few components of the PCB's PDN. A PCB is predominantly made of power supply units and cooling fans. These power supply units consist of voltage regulator modules, bulk capacitors, and MLCC capacitors. The SOCs that we see in slide are the GPU and CPU and memory modules enclosed in their packages. Electronic packaging provides power connectivity from the PCB to SOCs and signal connectivity from one SOC to another. We also see mounting holes as highlighted in the slide for mounting fans onto the PCB for thermal cooling. Cross-sectional layer stack view of a power distribution network The PCB consists of several packaged electronic circuits and these packaged electronic circuits consist of several SOCs or digital systems. These digital systems constitute of blocks or macros of functionality which are made of several smaller instances of basic gate cells. At the grassroot level are the PMOS and the NMOS devices. The power distribution network helps deliver a reliable voltage from the voltage source to correctly BIOS the PMOS and NMOS devices for optimum operation of the digital systems. The power distribution network of the PCB package and die consists of stacks of metal layer sandwiching dielectric layers. These metal layers are called power and ground layers. These layers are connected through solid metal structures called vias. Since modern-day SOCs consist of billions of transistors, all of which need to be powered by a few voltage sources, the path connecting the voltage regulators to the transistors begin with power planes in micrometer dimensions on PCB and package till nanometer dimension wires of the power grid on the chip. Power Distribution Network Component Analysis In this lesson so far, we have seen what a power distribution network is composed of. From here on, we will discuss the role each of the component plays in the PDN and how the industry analyzes and optimizes the different components of the PDM. PCB and Package PCB and Package routings provide off-chip electrical routing and connectivity. These off-chip power routings are called power and ground planes. The PCB or Package is typically a stack up of tens of metal layers sandwiching dielectric layers. Their parasitic elements impact the voltage rail from few megahertz to tens of megahertz. They degrade the Vmin and Vmax and noise values of the voltage rail. VRN The voltage regulator module is a buck converter that steps down 12V, 5V or 3.3V to the level required by SOCs. Typical modern-day SOCs need a supply ranging from 0.4 to 2.5V. Most VRNs are discrete components soldered onto the PCB. They are slowest to respond to change in the load current, thereby leading to requirement to add capacitors that react fast enough to the change in the load currents. 
the typical response time is in millisecond to microsecond providing constant voltage to the SOCs against fast switching currents until megahertz range based on the quality or grade of the VRM we select. Bulk capacitors. This is the largest discrete capacitor that is placed in parallel to the VRM and the PCB. The response time is in millisecond to micro range. That is, they filter the fluctuations in voltage till 1 MHz. They impact how fast the voltage settles to a stable value after a fast transient load change on the PDN. Typical bulk capacitances value are 100 microfarad, 200 microfarad, 470 or 630 microfarad. MLCC capacitors on board. MLCC capacitors on board filter out voltage noise in the range of 1 MHz to few MHz. They impact how fast the voltage settles to a stable value after a fast transient load change on the PDN. The typical response time is in the range of hundreds of microseconds. Typical MLCC capacitor on board have values of 22 microfarad, 47, 63, 100 or 220 microfarad. MLCC capacitors on package. MLCC capacitors on the package filter out noise on voltage rail in the tens of megahertz frequency range. They impact how fast the voltage settles to a stable value after a fast transient load change on the PDN. The typical response time is in the range of hundreds of nanosecond. MIM and CDI capacitors MIM and CDI capacitors are integrated capacitors of the PDN. The typical values range from picofarads to tens of nanofarad. Depending on the area allocation of the die, they help filter the high frequency noise on the PDN and prevent Vmin and Vmax violation from occurring. The frequency of filtering the noise on voltage rail is hundreds of megahertz, with a response time of nanosecond to fast switching currents. Workload or ICCT Is the current drawn by active devices on the chip? The drawn current ranges from a few milliamp to hundreds of amperes based on the application and product. The current is usually fast switching and causes Vmin and Vmax violations and noise on the voltage rail. Its frequency of impact is from 0 Hz to tens of gigahertz. On die power grid. The power routing on the die is called power grid. It consists of stack up of tens of metal layer, sandwiching dielectric layers. It degrades the Vmin and Vmax and adds to the noise of the power rail. Its parasitic elements impact the voltage rail in ranges of tens of megahertz till gigahertz. Why design for low power? In portable applications, the products run off a battery which eventually runs down and needs recharging or replacing. Hence, product designers aim to extend battery life while also adding features and reducing size, making low power IC designs crucial. In applications that are permanently connected to a cord, the need to reduce dependence on fossil fuels and lower greenhouse emissions leads us to seek low power solutions for all problems involving electronics. High performance chips are limited to about 150 watt before liquid cooling or other costly heat sinks become necessary. While chip functionality was once limited by area, it is now often constrained by power. There are two components to power dissipation in CMOS circuits, that is dynamic and static. Dynamic dissipation is when the chip is in active mode. Static dissipation is when the chip is in standby or sleep mode. Power and performance architects aim at hitting the lowest power consumption possible without any performance bottlenecks. Year after year, the static power dissipation which should have been close to zero keeps increasing and is becoming equal to the dynamic power dissipation. Static power Did you know that even when your gadget is not in use, its battery can still drain due to the leakage current at the transistor level? This leakage current depends on the biasing and physical parameters of the CMOS technology node, such as doping, oxide thickness, threshold voltage and the width and length of the channel. Leakage is becoming exponentially worse for lower technology nodes. The different kinds of leakage currents and their causes in CMOS technology are Subthreshold leakage It is primarily a function of threshold voltage. Lower the technology node, lower the threshold voltage, thereby exponentially higher the leakage. It is the important contributor to static power in CMOS. Drain-induced barrier lowering Larger the VDS leads to larger depletion region around drain. Any depletion reduces the threshold voltage. Reduced threshold voltage causes higher leakage current. Punch through. If the source in the drain depletion regions merge due to large VDS and short channels, then punch through leakage occurs. Thin gate oxide tunneling. TOX has been scaling with each technology generation. We have reached a point where TOX is so small that direct tunneling of current occurs. Gate-induced drain leakage. 
Tunneling current occurs in very high field depletion region in gate drain overlap region. This is caused by thinner oxides, lightly doped drains and high VTT. PN junction current. Reverse biased source and drain junctions leak current. It is very small but may increase with scaling as doping is very high in future technologies. Hot carrier injection. Electric field due to VDD on drain and gate create high energy hot carriers. Hot carriers might get trapped in gate oxide and lower the threshold voltage leading to leakage current. Dynamic power. Switching power. Dynamic power consists mostly of switching power. To estimate this power, we consider each node of a circuit. The capacitance at that node is a sum of the gate, diffusion and wire capacitances on the node. The activity factor can be measured from logic simulations. It depends on the task being executed. For example, playing video games causes a higher activity factor than editing a file. The effective capacitance of the node is its true capacitance multiplied by the activity factor. The switching power depends on the sum of the effective capacitances of all the nodes. Switching power equal to Cv square F where V equal to the supply voltage, F equal to the switching frequency. Dynamic power, short circuit power. Dynamic power also consists of short circuit power. It is caused by current from VDD to ground when both the pull-up and pull-down networks are partially on while an inverter input transient occurs. This is usually less than 10% of the whole dynamic power, so it can be conservatively estimated by adding 10% to the switching power. ANSYS multiphysics workflows for chip package, board, and system. ANSYS has the comprehensive power solution for the entire PDN, from transistors to connectors. It has a variety of tools ranging from structural and thermal integrity to power and signal integrity. SI wave, HFSS, RHSC, electrodermal cater to the part of the PDN whose electrical dimensions almost approximate the wavelength of the operation. Redox SC and power artists are the on-die tools that optimize the workloads and the on-die PDN elements.